The year is 1991. In the vast Saudi Arabian desert, a tense silence hangs heavy in the air. Operation Desert Storm, the US-led coalition's response to Saddam Hussein's invasion of Kuwait, is about to enter a critical phase. Hundreds of thousands of soldiers, bristling with advanced weaponry, are poised to strike. Among them, the soldiers of the US Army's 2nd Armored Cavalry Regiment, or 2nd ACR, prepare to face the Iraqi Republican Guard. Their mission is to scout ahead, probing for weaknesses in the enemy's defenses. Little do they know, they are about to become embroiled in one of the most significant tank battles in military history. The desert at night is a cold and unforgiving place. The soldiers of the 2nd ACR huddle in their vehicles, the dim glow of instrument panels illuminating their faces. They know that somewhere out there, in the darkness, the enemy awaits. The stage is set for a clash of titans, a battle that will test the mettle of both sides. The second ACR's orders were clear, locate and disrupt the enemy, paving the way for the main assault. Their objective was a line of longitude designated as 73 Easting, a seemingly insignificant point on the map that would soon become synonymous with armored warfare. Their primary weapon is the M1 Abrams, a 60-ton behemoth of steel and depleted uranium armor. Alongside the Abrams, the Bradley fighting vehicle provides additional firepower and troop transport capabilities. The Americans hold another crucial advantage, technology. Their tanks and Bradleys are equipped with advanced thermal imaging and night vision systems, giving them an unprecedented ability to see in the dark. As the sun dips below the horizon, casting long shadows across the desert, the second ACR begins its advance. The stage is set for a battle that will redefine armored warfare. As darkness descended, the second ACR rolled forward, their thermal sights piercing the gloom. They moved with a speed and agility that belied their size, their tracks churning up the desert floor. The Iraqi defenses, arrayed in static lines, were caught off guard by the speed and ferocity of the American advance. The first contact was swift and brutal. An Iraqi tank column, caught in the open, was decimated by a storm of American fire. The Abrams guns roared, sending high explosive rounds hurtling through the night. The Iraqis, blinded by the darkness and outgunned, fought back with desperate courage, but their resistance was futile. The Battle of 73 Easting was quickly turning into a rout. The desert night was illuminated by the orange glow of burning Iraqi vehicles. The air was thick with the acrid smell of cordite and the stench of diesel fuel. The American advance continued relentlessly, the second ACR's tanks and Bradleys moving like avenging angels through the Iraqi lines. The American tankers, their adrenaline pumping, were amazed by the one-sided nature of the engagement. Their thermal sights gave them a clear view of the battlefield, while the Iraqis were reduced to firing blindly into the darkness. One American tank commander, Captain H.R. McMaster, would later describe the battle as a turkey shoot. The second ACR's aggressive tactics, combined with their technological superiority, had completely overwhelmed the enemy. The Battle of 73 Easting was a testament to the effectiveness of combined arms warfare. The Iraqi Republican Guard, once considered to be one of the most formidable armies in the world, was being systematically destroyed. One of the most harrowing moments of the battle occurred when a platoon of American tanks, led by Captain McMaster, stumbled upon a massive Iraqi tank battalion concealed in a shallow valley. The Iraqis, armed with T-72 tanks and dug-in infantry, had a clear tactical advantage. Outnumbered and outgunned, McMaster's platoon found itself in a desperate fight for survival. With remarkable courage and tactical acumen, McMaster ordered his tanks to charge directly into the enemy's teeth. The ensuing clash was a maelstrom of fire and fury. Despite being heavily outnumbered, McMaster's platoon fought with extraordinary skill and determination. Slowly, surely, the tide began to turn. By dawn, the valley floor was littered with the smoldering wreckage of Iraqi tanks. McMaster's platoon, against all odds, had emerged victorious. They had destroyed over 28 enemy tanks without losing a single one of their own. The Battle of 73. Easting was a resounding victory for the US Army and a testament to the skill and courage of the American soldier. It showcased the devastating effectiveness of the M1 Abrams tank and the importance of technology on the modern battlefield. 
The battle also highlighted the shortcomings of the Iraqi army, which was hampered by poor leadership, inadequate training, and inferior equipment. The legacy of 73 Easting continues to shape military thinking to this day. It demonstrated the importance of combined arms warfare, technological superiority, and above all, the human element in battle. The battle also served as a stark reminder of the cost of war, even in a lopsided victory. The Battle of 73 Easting was a watershed moment in military history.